So we, we kind of figured we had to start doing something to kind of cut back. And so I started reading blogs and I started figuring out about coupons and shopping and, and it became a bit of an obsession. I got tired of talking on the phone to people, so I started a blog. I was put it out, I'll just go look at what, see what I wrote. I'm not gonna tell you about the deals. Um, and that's kind of grown from there. What I found as my family continued to grow, I have three small children, um, six, four, and two years old, is that I don't have a lot of time to shop the way that I used to. I can't run from store to store to find the best deals. I hardly even have time to cut coupons anymore. Um, this is my coupon binder. This used to be stuffed full, and I would shop and shop, and I did a lot of shopping for the pantries. I did a lot of shopping for the shelter, the youth shelter here in town. Um, and would just say when I could get stuff for free, I would just get it and load up and take it down there. Um, so, you know, this used to be full, and I would cut my coupons and file them away. And I've paired, I mean, this is still, it's pretty empty now compared to what it used to be because I found that I have to figure out how to do this without relying so heavily on the coupons. And it's not so much a game for me anymore, like what can I get? What can I, you know, do in, in stock? I just, I'm really down to the bare essentials with my time and, and my efforts. So, um, I really spent more time focusing on what I can do to save money at the store and what I can teach people to do to save money at the store without sorting through all the coupons and, and trying to play all those games and, and gathering all the deals up and things like that. So um, just to kind of get an idea, how many of you routinely plan menus and write them out every, we every week? Okay. And how many people make an actual grocery list, a handwritten list when you go to the grocery store? Excellent. How many of you follow that list when you go to the grocery store? And then, wait, no, not add to it is not following it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I forgot I needed that, right? And then you get home and maybe you didn't need that, right? That's part of the problem. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is know what you have. That sounds so simple and it seems like, of course, yeah, whatever. But there's stuff in the back of the cupboards or the back of the pantry that you think like, oh, yeah, I'm going to use that someday, so I'm not going to get rid of it. Well, how long has it been there? Either use it, put it on your menu, or get rid of it. Um, and the best way to do that is to just make a pantry list. And there's one of these in your handouts, so you can kind of see um, where this came from. One of the things I'm going to do at the end, there's a piece of paper in the back. If you want to leave me your email address, you don't have to leave your name or anything like that, I can email you a link to a private page on my blog where I will put all of this information and links to places that I talk about and sources and things like that. Um, but you will only be able to access it through that link. I won't use your email for anything else. You don't have to leave your name or anything like that. But um, So some of these resources, like this is from, um, I got this off of about.com from frugalliving.com. And you know, she's a, it's a free downloadable form that you can get. And I just wanted you to have one to kind of see where it was like and kind of kick it off. So this is a pantry. I mean, this is really simple. Baking supplies, dried goods, you know, condiments, things like that. Make a list of what's in your, in your pantry. And if you haven't used it and you keep thinking you're going to use it, either put it on your menu this week or get rid of it. Check the expiration dates on stuff. Clean out your pantry. It'll, you know, take half an hour. Clean it out. Know what's there um, and, and so that you can use what you've got. Most people will find that they can plan the majority, if they really put their minds to it, of a couple weeks of menus without really having to buy anything separate outside of fresh produce, fresh dairy, that kind of thing, because there is so much stuff. I know that when I run to the store, a lot of times I'll be like, well, I, I should probably just grab a couple cans of tomatoes because I don't really know how many I have, you know, and, and then when I go through and do my list every six months or so, um, then I find <laughs> out that, oh, I've got 15 cans of tomatoes, I guess I should maybe make some soup. Um, you know, so you're just keeping an idea of what you have. You're gonna cut down on what you're gonna buy when you're at the store. Um, this goes to for, you can do the same thing like for your refrigerator, for your produce, things like that, because a lot of times people are wasting money because they're making a recipe that says you need um, a cup of celery. And so they buy a stock of celery and then let the rest of it go bad. You know, and <coughs> you're wasting money that way. You know, and every little bit that you can do to kind of plan ahead and know what you've got, you plan your menus around what you have, not what you want. Um, the same thing goes for shopping. You plan your grocery shopping based on what's in your pantry and what's on sale, like in that order, not, in, you know, not by anything else. Um, so this is the first place to start. Know what you have and, and start from there, okay? There are some very creative things that you can do with the things you have on hand if you start to think kind of outside the box a little bit. This is an example of um, allrecipes.com has a really excellent tool. Lots of places have tools. This is the one I like to use. 
Um, if you log on to the website, it, like you put in what you've got. I've got some chicken sausage that I'm not even sure how I obtained. I, like I think maybe at one time I had a recipe and then it wasn't so good, but I had bought two in case it was good. Um, <laughs> and we had a recent freezer issue with the power going out. So now I have to find a way to use that sausage. And so I went in and I went, I've got tomatoes, and I've got beans, and I've got sausage, so what can I find? And in the first three, I came up with one that I thought sounded pretty decent, you know, and so you go into that. The other thing is if you have a smartphone, or you know, then they have this, it's called the dinner spinner. And you can go in and you pick your dish type, you just kind of swipe what you want, soup, appetizer, main dish, whatever. Ingredients that you have on hand or that you're looking to use and how fast you want it to be ready. And it'll come up with a bunch of ideas for you. Then you can go back in and put it in. You can say, you know, I've got beans and olives and some weird wheat thing, I forgot what it was. <laughs> you know, like, and it'll pull up a bunch of ideas for you. Um, so, you know, Again, go back to your pantry list. What have you got there? What do you, you know, of your tried and true recipes, what can you use those things for? If you have to put more than two ingredients on your grocery list to make that thing, then maybe you should skip that for now. If you're really trying to pare down your budget and try to get used to this, you know, maybe you, maybe you look for, for a new option. That being said, don't go planning a menu with all new recipes because you're gonna, you're gonna cook stuff. You're gonna like, you're gonna make a menu. That's like setting yourself up for failure. You don't want to do that. You want to stick with the very basics, especially if this is something you're just starting to do. Or if you're, if you're used to eating out a lot or you eat sandwiches all the time and kind of cooking is something that's it's a new idea for the family, which happens a lot. I have a friend whose goal last year was to not eat out at all for three days. Like that was a serious thing for their family to do, to eat every meal at home for three days. You know, but three days, you know, she did that and then she went a little bit further. Um, you know, so if, if you're doing it, small steps. You know, if, if this is your first go at cooking at home and getting your family to the table or getting yourself to the table, you know, go with the, it doesn't even have to be great. I would, I am not a proponent of things like hamburger helper. But you know, if it's a first step and it gets you to eat at home instead of out, it's still gonna be better than spending the money out and on the, and the food that's gonna be, you're gonna get at the restaurant. So baby steps, you know, get yourself doing that for a couple of weeks and then move away from those things to the things you can make yourself the, uh, and start adding one new recipe a week or something like that. So once you put, you, you know, put in your ingredients, see what you've got going on there. Um, I think there's one, I'm missing one. There we go. Okay, so you, this is what I'm talking about. Think outside of the recipe, okay? I was gonna say think outside the recipe box, but I thought that was a little cheesy. <laughs> But okay, so <laughs> like a few minutes ago, I, I said that I, I found this recipe for uh, this sausage soup. Um, and so here it is. It's got the dry beans, um, it calls for Italian turkey sausage links, um, chicken broth, white wine, red pepper, and a few other things. Well, um, I have that it was chicken sausage, so I'm gonna use that instead. Um, got the diced tomatoes and the chicken broth, a cup of white wine, I'm not going to put it in my soup. I might drink it while I'm making my soup, but I'm not going <laughs> to put it in my soup. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to spend that. To me, that's an ingredient that's expensive to put in a meal if I'm trying to save money. If, um, so you know, I'm going to put. You can you can cut out things like wine. You can put in extra water or cooking wine, or just add a little extra flavor, like extra seasoning. You're probably going to want the moisture and something like that. But you know, start to think about those things. What can I replace it with that it would still be okay? What do I have that I could use instead? Um, I'm reading through, oh shoot, I didn't show you my whole screen. Okay, um, what it says is increase the servings but not the cost of what you're making by adding more broth and more vegetables and more beans. So this serving, this says that it can serve six people, I think. In my house that probably wouldn't serve all five of us. Um, but I only have that one thing of sausage and I'm not gonna go buy another one to make another plant. So what I can do instead is to look through my fridge and I've got some extra green beans because I made green beans with some fish last week or, or at the end of last week and they need to get used. Um, so I throw those in, a little extra broth, um, some extra beans and you've bulked up what you've made, you've increased the servings and you really haven't increased the cost of your meal at all. You can in fact double it without having to increase the cost of what you're in. You just gotta kind of start thinking about what can I do to make more with what I've got. Um, Americans eat way too much protein. Okay, um, an average woman needs around 60 grams of protein, which is one full chicken breast, which is actually two servings. A half of a chicken breast, which is about three and a half ounces, is 30 grams of protein. 
So to cut, you know, if you're if you read about health being healthy and things like that, cutting back on the protein in your recipes to save money is not going to affect your family's intake of protein, most likely. Um, we, we eat a lot more than what it is that we need. So to do something like this, to don't put any more meat in, but add to what you, you know the bulk of it the vegetables and the broth and the beans and stuff like that you're going to stretch your buck a lot further stay healthy and and be just fine um when you when you look at something like this like all recipes look through the reviews because they're going to have all kinds of ideas in there about what you can do how people have changed it they'll say oh i did this instead this is a crock pot recipe which i love crock pot recipes especially when i find them at three in the afternoon and it sounds really good <laughs> well then i can't use it because obviously i don't have enough time um, so one of the, you know, when you're looking at stuff like this, like a soup, you can use frozen vegetables in place of, in place of the raw ones and have it and cook it on the stove top and it's going to go a lot faster. Or if you've got the raw vegetables and you want to use them up, saute them first and then just throw them in the pot and you're going to, you know, you're going to, the recipe calls for cooking your sausage beforehand anyway. So you can change around what you're doing. So if it's a last minute thing, you can, soup is always a good last minute, I don't know what I'm going to make today kind of thing because you can put lots of stuff together that you've got little bits of left over. Um, another thing that you can do when you're, when you're trying to kind of think outside the box is you want to make like um, baked chicken, like fried chicken, baked chicken, and hey, you don't have any breadcrumbs. Well, I could toast bread, but I don't want to do all that. Well, but maybe you have a couple handfuls of cornflakes or something in the, fr you know, in, the, in the pantry that you haven't used. Nobody's going to eat it because it's not a full bowl and they don't want to mix their cereal together and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, crush that up. Crush up a couple of Rice Krispies, a couple of things like that together, and then you've got coating. You've got breading coating, you know, to throw into something like that. And it just, you know, play around with things that you can replace, and it, and it becomes, after a while, just like anything else, it's difficult at first, but after you've done it a few times, you start to realize, oh, this isn't so bad, I can probably do this. Um, and, and it starts to, you start to think that way. Let's see if I go backwards now. There we go. Okay, so then, you know what, now you know what you've got and you're willing to kind of you know, expand the horizons of what you're doing here, um, you know, it's time to plan your meals out. I've tried every which way from Sunday to plan my menus. I've made just a list of what I'm going to make that week so that I can decide on the fly. Um, I've made a list of things that I might have enough ingredients for and I could make on the fly. Um, but what every, religiously, I come back to pick the days of the week that I'm going to make stuff, know what I'm making, when I'm making it, and it's easier for me in the long run and it saves more money. If I know, and I just to take a look at our schedule for the week and know that, okay, I gotta, you know, I've got this going on this day, this way and this day, and to know what I have coming in is just makes, it makes everything go more smoothly. It makes less trips to the grocery store. Every trip you go, every time you have to stop at the grocery store for something for the day, you're probably gonna add 10 or $15 to your budget that you wouldn't have spent otherwise because you're gonna run in and you, oh yeah, we should probably have some of that too. Or, oh, yeah, I needed milk, but you didn't really need, you, your milk could have really lasted until your, sh your shopping trip on Monday or whatever your normal day is. Um, so, you know, plan your menu. Go to the grocery store one time. And if you forget something, find a way to do without it. Don't go back for it. You know, find, adjust things, change things around a little bit. When you're planning, you really only need to come up with five days of meals. Okay, uh, you've got one day for leftovers then and one day of easy. That can be um, Brinner. With, you know, the breakfast for dinner is always a, it's a, like a staple at our house. Um, you can do um, soup and sandwiches, you know, in the winter, do soup and sandwiches one day. Something that's easy, that's not a lot of cooking, that kind of lets you just kind of regroup yourself. Maybe that's the day you do your planning, your shopping is the day you do soup and sandwiches or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of people do theme nights to make menu planning easier. It gets hard to think of something new to put on the menu every week. Um, but some people will do like Monday nights is always Italian food, Tuesday nights is Mexican food, Wednesday nights is soup and sandwiches or, you know, so it's the same kind of thing. And another thing you can do is save your menus and rotate them. When you get three or four weeks going, pull that, pull that other week out. You already know what you've got on the menu. You know, you've, you've done it before, it's routine, you can do it again. Um, and then it doesn't take so much thinking. I have to go back, I post a lot of times on my blog what my menus are for the week. I used to do it religiously so much anymore. Um, but I'll go back through when I'm really struggling and look at my old menus and say, oh, that's right, I forgot about that, you know, and, and, and put those things together. When you're planning your menus, look at what you're making and see what ingredients can go into several, into several different things. So if you're going to make lasagna and you've got ricotta and you only need half of it, well, either make a double recipe and freeze it or plan something else at the end of the week that will also use that ricotta so that it doesn't sit in your fridge 
and turn it into a science project because that's what I've heard happens. Um, <laughs> not saying I know that it happens. Um, you know, so you look at what you're what you're making and think of how you can utilize all of your ingredients. That celery, you know, like if you've got kids and they need snacks, set it up for a snack one day with the peanut butter and the raisins and that whole thing, and another day put it in soup, and another day use it in stuffing or so, you know something like that. Um, just try to make look at what you're buying and figure out how many ways you can use that, or cook it up and freeze it. You know, before, even if it's just uh, if, it, if even your raw vegetables, you can saute and freeze, and they're gonna reconstitute well for soup and stuff like that. Um, so when you plan your menus, do it that, you know, kind of think ahead, combine everything, and kind of and try to put it together that way. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a yes? What if you're not a mom with kids like right. I am? Right. Just a guy, and mine usually looks like, well, seven days a week, I keep eggs around. Mm -hmm. That's, a good, that's exactly a good way to do it. Like think of, start, add one thing. Try to do one thing. And when you, if, you're, if you're cooking for just you, make one thing and portion it out and freeze it. You know, and then, so you, may, you make a recipe, divide it into portion sizes and stick it in the freezer. And then you've got the frozen stuff that you made instead of had to buy, somebody else made it and you bought it. You know, and, and it's ready to go and then you, you've got another day easy. You know, but, and it's, it's home cooked and you've got, um, you, you save money by buying, the, you know, portioning it out, if you can get, several meals out of one recipe, you know, that's fantastic. Or, or team up with somebody else who's cooking for small and do the same thing and split it. You should make one thing and split it in half so you don't have 18 days of lasagna. You know, like that. <laughs> I can eat lasagna. Yeah, yeah, freezer's good, but you know, <laughs> variety is also good. Um, and then I think when you start to get bored of the stuff that you're having is when you start kind of, maybe I'll just go out to eat instead. I don't want to eat that again, or I don't want to have this thing, we just, I just did that. You know, well, I'll just go out tonight. Or I'll just order, I'll just pick up fast food on the way home, that kind of thing. That's where you start. You've got to kind of add some variety at the same time, but slowly and not, you know, like I said, you're not going to be. Nobody is, nobody run, goes from the, I think I had this on a slide later, but nobody goes from being a couch potato to running a marathon overnight. And you're not going to go from not budgeting and not, and not uh, menu planning and not grocery shopping frugally to being like, you know, you know, like the universe here with this. Oh, it's not gonna happen overnight. Little bits at a time, otherwise you set yourself up for failure. You're just like dieting, just like anything else. If you run out of gung-ho and don't like make it a habit, you're probably gonna set yourself up to fail at it. So. Um, okay. Now, this is survival mode, okay? Um, a good friend of mine runs a blog called Home Ec 101, which I'll show you later. It's an amazing site. She's got all kinds of great information, and this is her information. Um, if, when you, if you are living paycheck to paycheck, and, or you're living paycheck to halfway to next paycheck, which a lot of people do, and you're kind of at your wit's end, what are we gonna do? You know, even, I've, I've been saving, I've been doing other things, but I'm still at my wit's end. These ideas are ideas, and again, they're not all showing up here. Um, these are short-term solutions. I'm not, you know, I, again, I want my family to eat healthy. I want to do what's best for my family. But if I'm deciding between eating and not eating, then I'm going to, there are ways to make things go further. There are ways to make it better in a short-term solution kind of way. Um, over time, you can incorporate these kind of tips into a grander scale, into the more healthy recipes and things like that. So here's some things that um, bouillon, it, not so healthy um, by itself, but you can make these, you can use bouillon to flavor something that maybe, like if you've got chicken breasts and not a lot to go with it, or you've got rice and beans and tomatoes, you know, right? Well, put, you can put some bouillon in when you cook the rice and it's gonna add some extra flavor and it's gonna make some of those things that maybe weren't, that you know, maybe weren't so, you just didn't quite wanna make them or whatever, you know, I wanna, I want to make it better than, it, than what I've got and you know, add a little flavor to it that way. Um, rice, brown rice if possible. And as a side note, buying rice in the bulk at the store instead of in boxes from Minute Maid or Minute Man or whatever that is, Minute Rice, um, is, is less expensive and better for you. Um, it takes 25 minutes to cook rice, you know, so as opposed to the five to cook it, which then takes five to set afterwards or whatever, you're cutting 10 minutes out of your day. Um, you can use it as a side dish. You can use it in place of meat in a recipe. 
if you want to make your meat your budget go further like i said earlier cut your meat intake in half and in your recipe if you're making a casserole and it calls for a, two pounds of meat of, of brown hamburger put in a pound and then put in a cup or a cup and a half of rice instead of cooked rice instead and you're going to bulk up that you're going to have that same consistency you're going to have the same amount of food and you're going to have stretched your dollar a little bit further <coughs> excuse me um, it's going to rice absorbs the flavor of what it's cooked with so you know you're going to kind of retain the flavor that you're making as well um, beans and lentils um, when you put beans with rice you can do a lot of things it really is a um, <laughs> the first time i made i have a recipe that i love and it's um, spicy black beans and rice and it's simple it's like um, it's mexican stewed tomatoes and black beans and garlic and you mix it with rice and i love it um, my husband is a big meat eater and so i would I, my plan the first time i made it for him was to also make some chicken and serve it all together and so he, he i said he's like what are we having i said oh i'm making black beans and rice he's like am i in prison what is this i mean I'm like, you know and he's thinking rice and beans you know like and when i put it out and it's like got flavor and stuff and he was like oh this isn't so bad that was at the end of a very long fight about don't you trust my cooking <laughs> No, not that time. Um, so you, know, there, you can do a lot of things with beans and lentils. Um, you, can, you, can, you can use lentils in place of meat in recipes as well. If you've never tried lentils, the first time I bought them, I'm like, I'm going to do this. I bought lentils, I bought them in bulk, I bought them, you know, and it's them in, in cupboard. And then they sat there in the cupboard for a long time because I had the guts to buy them, I didn't have the guts to use them because <laughs> I had never used them before. Um, but they really take on the flavor of, uh, again, just like rice, it kind of has the same, it, it works the same way. Um, okay, there you go. There, she's saying, like, um, don't think about just beans and rice. You think about, you know, chili, making it that way, putting in some of the rice in your chili. You can chicken or rice soup, well, like chili, you can put in some lentils, put in some rice in that and bulk it up that way. Um, refried greens, burritos, enchiladas. Hey, you can wrap any of that stuff up. You know, you don't have to have meat in it. It doesn't. You can get a little bit creative with some of those things. Um, eggs, scrambled eggs, French toast, crustless quiches, all that kind of stuff are, are great. I am. I can have a great recipe for a crustless quiche that is goes in the freezer, and you just chop up all your stuff and you throw it in a gallon bag and you put it in the freezer. And when you're done, you just kind of mush it up. Very, very cheap, very good, and pretty good for you as well. Um, Rolled oats, not quick instant oats. Quick instant oats don't hold up well in recipes. They get mushy really fast and they don't do well. Um, again, you can stretch recipes with beef with the, and casserole, things like that. You can, um, <laughs> she says, experiment carefully. This is not the time to waste food. So, you know, don't throw in like tons of that. I'm gonna do, and then, you know, kind of think about what you're doing and maybe start by cutting things down by a quarter, you know, and then see how that, how that tastes, how the flavor is to you, and then add from there. Potatoes, um, we used to make um, burritos with potatoes. Beans, rice, potatoes, wrap them up in tortilla and eat it that way. Um, and pasta, instead of just chili, throw some pasta in it if you can. Um, all that kind of stuff. Um, just butter noodles, butter noodles, peas, and some tuna. You don't have to have the cream of mushroom soup. You, don't have, you know, just start putting things, like some of that stuff you can put together without the way you've traditionally thought of it. So. Is that kind of making sense? If I'm okay. Let's see where we're at here. Okay. Okay, now, when you hit the grocery store. Okay, you've got your menu planned. You know what you're going to do. You get to the grocery store. How do you spend your money wisely once you get there? Well, you've made a list. You should buy produce that's in season. If you're not sure what that is, you can Google produce in season, and it will tell you which produce is what's right. Or you can walk in and you can see what's the cheapest <laughs> stuff to buy and you're going to know which thing is in season. <laughs> right? Um, but if you're trying to plan a little bit ahead and you want to know before you get there, um, buy the produce that's in season. If you want to get adventurous and you have a little bit of time, buy some of it, um, blanch it, which is to quickly drop fresh produce like beans, green beans, things like that. Drop them in boiling water for a few minutes and pull them out and then freeze them. What that does is it starts to break down some of their structure and so that when you thaw them out, they're not like a gushy, slimy mess, which a lot of um, raw foods are when you freeze them. Blanch them up, throw them in the freezer. If they're really inexpensive, you find a really great deal on them, you know, throw them in. Or um, blend them up. If you, you know, you, you want to save some for later, you want to put it in soups, you want to like up the nutritional content of your food. And zucchini is super cheap, but there's no way you're going to eat six zucchini. 
you know, blend, set it, put it in the food processor and freeze it in ice cube trays. And then you can drop one in your soup or two in your soup or something like that later down the road and you don't have to spend the money on it. You got them when they were 38 cents or something like that. Um, and then, you know, freeze them in an ice cube tray and then put them in a freezer bag and hold on to it that way. Again, you're upping your, your nutritional value and anything that you pay less for now that you would have to buy later is saving you money. That's a really difficult concept to kind of wrap your brain around and one that I fought with for a long time. Um, it goes along the idea of stockpiling um, and the, the coupon shows that I refuse to watch because they make me kind of mad. Um, you know, where people are talking about their stockpiles. Well, a true stockpile can be one extra can, one extra jar of peanut butter if you buy yourself. You know, you've got one on hand that you, when they were on sale, you got two of them, and you're spending a dollar and a half less than you would have if you bought it later. You know, and you've got one on hand. Or if you, you know, you pick up two extra things that are at a deep price. It's something that you buy on a regular basis. Pick up two if your budget for the week allows for it. If you can cut out, instead of getting two pounds of hamburger, get one and buy two extra of something else that's on sale. That's a true stockpile. Just making sure that you're keeping some things on hand so that when times do get really tight, you've got stuff there that you can stretch. You can look and say, okay, I really only have $30 to spend on groceries this week. What can we do to make this work? Well, look through your freezer, look through this, some of that stuff that you've stockpiled and you can stretch that way. Um, buy frozen vegetables in lieu of fresh vegetables, especially like right now in the middle of the winter. It's winter, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you can buy frozen vegetables, um, it's, it's a little bit less expensive and you're going to kind of get rid of that factor where you might let stuff spoil. If you have a, if you have a bad habit of letting red peppers and green peppers go bad in your freezer um, or in your fridge, then you know, like buy, buy some frozen if you can and that way you can parcel them out. Or if you make smaller amounts of food and buying a whole pepper is not something you want to, you know, buy, some, buy something frozen and, and parcel it out for yourself that way. Again, you can also use them to bulk stuff up later, soup and casseroles and anything like that. Or just side dishes. If you're, if, if, if you're stretching what you have and, and you're looking at your family and you're going, this is not gonna, they're not gonna be full when this is over. Vegetables, you know, frozen vegetables or an extra side of rice with butter and some seasoning, things like that are gonna help fill people up and without ladening them down with like gross stuff that they might snack on later. Um, Spices. Um, if you're trying to cook and you want to kind of stretch things, sometimes you might be tempted to buy a lot of new spices. Spices are expensive. Um, even the cheap ones are expensive. And if you need a quarter of a teaspoon for something and you buy the $4 jar of it and find out that you really don't like cumin after all, then you've just wasted $4. You know, if you can buy a little tiny bit in the bulk section then and spend 15 cents on it till you know that that's something you're going to use continually, you've saved yourself $4, which is a couple pounds of meat or something. You know, like you kind of think that way. Um, and like I said before, cut your normal meat purchases in half. Look at what you're planning to do for the week and then go back to like, if you can't kind of put that in your mindset when you're making your meals, once you've put your menu out, go back and look at what you're making one more time and say, okay, now what can I change? You know, like I've, I've gone through what I had in my pantry. I went through my fridge and I made my menu list. Now what can I change? Well. Maybe I should add this to this and I can cut this down or I can split this meat up between two meals. Um, because again, I said, Americans eat way too much protein as it is. You know, like, it's just not a problem, generally speaking. One chicken breast is enough protein for a day. Um, so you can save a lot of money at the grocery store by cutting down on the meat that you're buying. If this is, you know, you're really trying to cut that budget and you really need to make things stretch, this is a big area to do that. Um, buy extra of your most used items when they're on sale. Like I said before, the idea of the stockpile. If you kind of start to watch what you're buying at the store and you watch to say um, what the sales are and you're buying things when they're on sale, you'll notice that about every three months or so, things go on sale. So when you see that peanut butter has dropped in price by a dollar and a half, you don't need to buy 15 jars unless you have 15 kids who eat a jar a week, you know, like, because it's gonna go on sale again. It will go on sale again. Um, so, you know, kind of keep an eye out for that or kind of notice when things are on sale. Generally, it's about every quarter, you'll, you'll something will go on sale. So buy a few extras. That is especially for um, like uh, paper goods and things like that and laundry soap and, and all that kind of stuff at the, at the store. Do you, don't ever buy those at full price. Don't, I mean, toothpaste, deodorant, none of that. Don't ever buy that stuff at full price. That's just wasted money. 
Um, you can always, even without coupons, you can get it on a deal at the store. So um, unless somebody in the office is complaining about the smell, then maybe you run out and buy some deodorant, but yeah, don't buy it full price away. Um, um, watch uh, when you're buying things and you're comparing prices and you what you want to watch is not the price of what you're buying But the price per ounce and most of the stores anymore do a pretty good job on their labels on the shelves They have the price and then up in the corner. You'll see a little like so much per ounce. This is this is how much this is per ounce That's the important thing to watch um, If you want to buy what if, if, you're, if you're gonna buy the bigger boxes of something if it's something that you 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 know You use you'll use again if you're gonna pay 9.8 cents an ounce versus 22 cents an ounce for the smaller container, you're not saving money by buying the smaller container just because it costs less, you know, because it, it doesn't really cost less. And you're going to find those things, sorry, and you're going to find those things on the top shelves and on the bottom shelves. Because the stuff in the middle that's at eye level is the stuff that is the most expensive. It's the smaller boxes of things. It's the things that look like they're going to fit nicely in your cupboard. Those things are the most expensive things. And the things on the shelf right below that that kids can see. Those are the second most expensive things <laughs> because the kid, I want this, I want this. Um, the things that are the least expensive are going to be on the top shelves and on the bottom shelves, and you're going to have to kind of look around to see what you're doing. Um, and it's not always the store brand either that's the least expensive. If you're watching sales and you're kind of buying what's, whatever the loss leaders are, a lot of times are going to be the, brain, the brand names. Um, a loss leader is when they have a sale and there's something you're like, how do they put that on sale like that? Well, it's called a loss leader. The reason they put it on sale is because they want you to come to the store. They're assuming that when you get to the store, you're going to buy other things that you weren't planning on buying because you're going to see them. And so they'll take the hit on those things that are more, usually more expensive, um, which is why you take your list and you <laughs> stick to the list. And if you have kids, don't shop with kids. That's my other <laughs> like, Or, you know, or um, if you have a spouse who likes to throw stuff in the cart because it looks good, don't take them with you to the store either. I've heard that happens, like, and I don't know. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's really important. After you've been, um, yeah, okay, so you, you go through and you look for these things. There are going to be things, if you're shopping like this, there are going to be things that you're going to see when you get to the store that you weren't planning on buying. When you plan your shopping trip, kind of assume that cushion into your budget. If you want to start, like, there, there's going to be some stuff that I want to spend an extra $5 this week. Um, so if something is on sale that you didn't realize was on sale or a good deal, then you can buy that. Or you know, you don't usually get to buy deli meat, but it's pretty cheap, so maybe you'll splurge this week on that extra little bit of, you know. There will be a few things, but kind of know what your budget for that is even. Like, what's your budget for extras that you weren't planning on buying before? After you go to the store, take your receipt. Keep three highlighters in your car. I'm so serious. In your car, do this, or you won't do it when you get home. Um, Three highlighters, one highlighter, go through your list and mark off all the things you bought that were on your list, that were on your, you know, your grocery list that you walked in the store with. Mark them off in one color. And then you take another color and you go back through and you mark off the things that you bought that were stockpile items that you had kind of planned and said, okay, this is, this, is a, this is a bonus buy. This is something I should buy because I had the extra money this time and it's a good deal, I should buy it. Mark that off in another color. And then you take the other color and you go and see what's left, <laughs> and you mark off the things that you bought that weren't on your list, and weren't, and you gotta be honest with yourself here. These weren't really a good deal, you really didn't need those Keebler fudge sticks, or you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, you mark out, and you mark those things off, and then go through the bottom and total them up, and see in your list, how much did I spend on things that were on my menu? If I had just bought what I wrote on my menu, on my grocery list, how much would I have spent versus my total? Look and see, what are the, what are the extra things? What did I spend money on? that is going to save me money later. I spent 20 bucks on stuff that I didn't need, but will eventually need, and I normally would have cost me 40 bucks to buy those things. That's a good buy. That's a good way. That's a good thing to know that you're doing. And then what's all the other crap that you bought that wasn't on your list that you kind of thought, oh, I might need that, or I should add that to my list, or, you know, that kind of thing. If, if you didn't, you know, Rarely are those things that you should add to your list something that you couldn't do without till next week. Put it on next week's list. Um, and I think doing this even a few times, you start to see in you know, black and white where your money is going. And you start to see how, it, how that, those little things add up after a long time. Um, you know, just because uh, you, you're walking through the store. You know, we used to take a calculator with us in the store and add stuff up. And even then, I'd be like, ah. 
we're at our limit, you know, like we're not done yet. And then you have to start, then I start thinking about what can I put back and what can I do that kind of thing. Um, not as effective as this. Because when you go and you see this and you're looking at it and you're going, oh, crap, what did I do? Next time you start thinking about how you're going to highlight that list when you're, that receipt when you're done, and you, okay, well, I know I don't need that this time. You know, maybe I'll have room for it next time. Yeah. When you, when you started doing that, did you find you cringe at certain items? Oh, totally. <laughs> there were things that I would buy that I forgot I bought. Like, I wanted it so badly that I forgot all about it by the time I checked out. Um, <laughs> you know, or, the, or something that, the kids would say, oh, yeah. I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's not such a bad idea for a snack. And I'd get home and be like, what was I thinking? Like, why would I spend money on this? You know, I can, I can do better than this. Um, but yeah, it's, you just, it increases your awareness. And just like anything else, when you're trying to save money, when you're trying to lose weight, when you're trying to, you know, anything else you're trying to do, the more aware you are of what you're doing, the more likely you are to be able to control what you're doing. It's just, it's very simple. It's a very simple thing to do. Um, <coughs> So yeah, that's, that's one of the biggest things you can do right, is this right here, this, the black and white. Okay, you did all the planning. You did, even if you don't like, feel like you're ready to do the planning, do this, you know, and then you're gonna wanna do the planning later, you know. Or grab your receipt from last week and go through it and look at it and see what was what. Um, okay, now the other thing, I, I kind of jumped back for a minute. Well, I was talking about meat earlier. One of the great ways to save money on meat, if, your family loves meat, you don't want to cut it out, you want to you can find other ways to say whatever. If you you can go to the meat department and talk to the people that work there. They're just, you know, they're just regular people. Talk to them and they'll tell you what the dates are on the meat or they'll tell you when it is that they put things on sale. I know that at Target, they put stuff, they put their $3 off stickers on their chicken breasts the night before, 2 days before their expiration date. And those expiration dates are like use or freeze by dates, right? They want to sell them by those dates. So on the, th on the 27th, that date is, then I know that on the 25th, that night, before they close, they're going to put one of those $3 off at the checkout stickers on it. So either I have to go in the morning, or I just kind of walk around at night, <laughs> like this, until they're right before closing, and then grab up what I need. Um, you know, and if, if you do do coupons, some, there are coupons for some things like that. Um, Golden Plump Chicken is the only chicken I'll buy because I've tried not buying it, and I'm it's the only chicken that I want to, that I want to buy for my family. Um, Target's the only place that sells it, so I have to buy chicken. I'm coming over there, and it's pretty expensive. Um, and I and, but they have put coupons out. They put out coupons for two dollars off. If I stack that with a three dollar off coupon that they put because it's I have to throw it in my freezer, then I have to save five dollars on my chicken. I've bought family packs of drumsticks and things like that for ninety eight cents because I had a $2 coupon and it was on sale and it had this sticker on it. You know, and just stacking up kind of some of those things. And when I see that, I'm gonna buy as many as I can. And you know, because I find something else to cut off of my budget that week because I'm not gonna get a price that good. But talk to the, talk to the meat department. Talk to, sometimes if they're bigger cuts of meat, something that you wouldn't normally, you don't normally cook a roast or you don't normally cook big cuts of meat. But they have some that are really marked down a lot of times the butchers at the grocery store will grind it up for you if you ask them. And then you take it home and you portion it up for yourself. Yes. Yep, they'll cut up they'll cut it up for you, they'll grind it up for you. They'll, you're right, they'll do a lot of that stuff for you and you just have to ask them. Just talk to the people that are working and say, you know, you know maybe I, I'm kind of interested in this. Is there any way this could happen or what are my options? And they'll let you know. I mean, you'd be surprised at the stuff that will, if you just start talking to them and are friendly. You've got to be friendly to people. <laughs> Please don't be mean to people. That's one of my biggest things. Um, they just work there. Uh, you know, so that's, you can find ways to do that too. You know, have them, sli like you said, have them slice up your, buying a whole ham and having it sliced into sandwiches is a heck of a lot cheaper than buying deli meat at the counter, right? Like that's, and if, if you want to do it that way. Um, when you buy, when you're buying things like ham, look for the content, the water content. Because if it's got a lot of water injected into it, you're paying for water. You know, like you're buying it by the ounce and you're paying for water. 
Um, when you're buying hamburger, a lot of times people go for um, things that, ha that are the lower ratios, uh, more fat, less lean, you know, less lean, because it's cheaper. But it's not cheaper because you're getting less for your money because that fat is going away and it's bad for you. Um, so even if it seems like it's a little pricier and you're buying two pounds of, of a really lean meat versus two pounds of a cheaper, fattier meat, you're still gonna get more out of this, this more expensive one because it's gonna go further. And you're gonna have less, less waste, less drain off, less cook off, whatever. Yeah? What's your opinion of those meats that you can't really see that are in a roll? I don't buy those. Okay, I don't either. I just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. My husband saw it, I was like, oh, look how much you can get. I'm like, but you can't. There's a reason. Yeah. Yeah, um, in, in all, like, you know, um, full disclosure, uh, my husband's a hunter. And so he hunts and processes the majority of our meat. So we don't spend, I don't, that's a big expense that I don't have. It's a lot of weekends I don't have with my husband at home and three kids, but, um, so it's kind of a trade off. Uh, but you know, he, I don't really believe it takes that long to find a deer. I mean, <laughs> we've had conversations about this. Um, yeah, nap time I've heard, like fall asleep, it's quieter out there than it is in my house. Um, so, but, you know, so we, we do a lot of that and we do process our own, so I'm rather particular about that kind of thing and I rarely buy a burger for anything unless I'm cooking for somebody else that I know doesn't want to eat venison. Um, does, it's too fatty for me, I just, I don't like the way that it tastes, I'm used to this. I was a vegetarian for 12 years until I had my second daughter and had horrible cravings for red meat, so um, much to his pleasure, he was quite happy about that. Um, but yeah, so you know, we, um, we don't buy a lot of burger, but I, I would not buy burger and tube. Um, if, you're buy, if you do a lot of burgers, um, or you're gonna have company, and you know, they make those prepackaged patties, that is a giant waste of money. You know, divide it up, you know, um, put it in the, in the freezer yourself, uh, and, and just in patties and put it that way. Um, brown it up and, and put it in the freezer. It's easier to cook later. If time is of the essence and you don't want to, I don't have time to cook meals at the end of the day and I don't want to use a slow cooker. Or I don't want to prepare as much as you can. There's a whole website called um, Once a Month Mom. <clears throat> and she has menus that she puts out once a month for the entire month along with a grocery shopping list and how to prepare it and what steps to take to get it all in and you take two days a month to cook and put all this stuff in your freezer. And it, she says to do it with somebody else because it's a lot of work to do by yourself um, and just and she puts the whole menu out there and she customizes, it's customizable to vegetarians, to people that are kosher, that are like it's ridiculous. And I have not been uh, brave enough to try that yet. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't remember if it's, I think it's .com. One, uh, once a month mom if you, but if you googled once a month mom you get her site um, and these are the things like I'll put links to this up if you like if you leave your email back there I will email you a link to a private page on my blog that's not a public you won't be able to find it just by going to my blog but I'll have links to these resources along with like kind of an outline and notes from what we talked about and things like that and you can feel free to email me and you know ask questions and stuff like that later too so those are just some extra ideas as well Okay, so I said this earlier, don't set yourself up to fail. You know, you don't, you're, not gonna go with, you're not gonna go at this overnight. If you save $5 this week, you saved $5 this week. You know, if you save $10 this week, that's $10. Some people do best by using cash, you know, and that's stuff, I know you didn't talk about this in all the aspects of this, the whole way the course runs, but um, my church, uh, I go to Plymouth and my church sells um, grocery bucks where the church buys the, the gift cards and then they get a percentage of that when they sell them to their patrons. And it's a fundraising thing. And if I buy a $100 gift card from Dylan, then I have $100 to use. And I know that when I'm done, I'm done. Like, I, I'm not gonna go any further. And so when things get busy and I am less organized, I often tend to go that route because I know that's one way that I can help to con control what I'm doing and kind of keep a better eye on it. Um, Plan simple, easy meals. Um, easy, less than healthy meals that keep you at home and at the dinner table, save you money and are more healthy for you than eating out. If you stay home and make pancakes and syrup for dinner, you're still probably gonna end up on the plus side of the health meter 
and then if you went out and had a burger and fries somewhere for four bucks, you know, like it's just going to balance out. Um, which kind of also, you know, it, it's a lot of information, and it's a lot. There are a lot of options out there, but you start thinking about some of the stuff, things like pancakes, and you know, bisquick biscuits, stuff like that. Is flour and baking powder and salt. Like that's all it, you know. And if you can start to realize some of those things and make them yourself instead of buying a four or five dollar box of mix, you're going to make your money go a little bit further. And that's all stuff that comes after you kind of gotten the hang of just say, just say simple and easy at first and work your way to these other things, or you're going to set yourself up to be like, ah, I can't do this. This is too much trouble. Which is kind of where I think the coupon thing comes in. Like people really dive into this and they, oh, I'm going to do this. And then they have stacks of papers that aren't cut, I've heard. Um, and you know, you must need to be filed, and I can't go buy this till I have the coupon. And I, you know, you're not doing yourself any favors that way. You're setting yourself up to fail, and you're going to end up spending more in the long run. Um, use what you have and be creative. Trying new recipes and new ingredients is awesome, but it can also cause you to spend more money. If you go through, if you pull out a magazine or go to all recipes and just start looking for new, oh, that's I see, I put that on the menu this week. You know. Without knowing what you've got on hand and you have to buy a bunch of new stuff to make it, you are not going to be saving yourself money. You're not going to be doing yourself any favors. If you have some leeway in your time and your budget, it's not a bad, it's, you, know, you can do that to start. And then you're going to build these kind of things is what I'm going to make. And then you've kind of built up your pantry around these ideas. But if you're trying to cut what you've got going on right now, it's not going to help you. Um, but going there and putting, like I showed you on the spinner, putting in what you've got and finding a recipe that uses what you've got, that's a good idea. Um, so use what you have and be creative. Um, and then the last one I have that's not showing up here is uh, stick to your grocery list and your budget. Make adjustments as needed when you're at the store um, and stick to your plan. And by that I mean if you go and you see that like you've got you've got something on your uh, on your menu, but you can substitute it for if you've got green beans on your menu, but you see that something else is cheaper and you can saute up some squash or some zucchini in place of green beans because it's cheaper, then be willing to do those kind of things. Be a little bit flexible that way, kind of be able to know what you're doing. But if you've got those green beans accounted for in three other things going on that week, don't substitute them out. You know, you got to kind of know what you're doing. But be flexible, see what's going on. If there's a sale on burgers, but you've got chicken on your, on your menu that week, figure it out when you get home and buy the burger and buy the chicken later. You know, like be able to substitute some things like that. Be a little bit more flexible. So, um, that's it. kind of, that's it. <laughs> um, there are, let's see if I can pull them up here. There are several sites, if I can find them, that I um, will put up that you can see. This one is called, it's DisneyFamily.com, and she has low cost, uh, it's not all showing up. My screen is whacked out, something right up. But she's got meals and recipes here that are easy, easy meals, $1.50 meals. Um, that you can kind of go through, and they're simple recipes. So if you're looking for easy, simple things that are a little bit more than mac and cheese, then you know look at some of this stuff. Um, meal, more meals on a budget. She's got all kinds of stuff there. Um, I told you about my friend that has uh, homeac101.com. At the bottom of her at the bottom of her pages, she has these whole, like sections of this. Clean up your act. Get cooking. Um, Start saving and all kinds of ideas on how to, basic things here, how to roast a chicken. I had no idea that it was so easy to make baked chicken. You put some oil in a pan, you put some chicken in a pan, and you put some salt and pepper on it, and you're done. It's like, really? <laughs> I had no idea it was that easy. Um, how to make your own chicken stock, save money on that. You know, you can do that when you're cooking your chicken. Um, how to make um, white sauce is an invaluable thing to learn because you can make so many cream of mushroom soup. I mean, make your own white sauce and throw in some mushroom, some fresh mushrooms. Um, mac and cheese. I don't buy mac and cheese. I make mac and cheese. Um, I even make dairy-free mac and cheese and gluten-free mac and cheese for my family. So, you know, it's just easier when you do it this way. It takes just as much time as dumping it out of a box. So she's got all kinds of really interesting and good, like, kind of how to learn things. And I haven't read it yet, but I heard that her how to clean a toilet thing is really funny. Um, <laughs> she, was cry she was laughing about that the other day. Um, this is uh, five dollar dinners. This is five dollar dinners com. She has recipe books upon recipe books of five dollar dinners, and she breaks it down by price per item in her in the recipe. Like 
you know, this much in this recipe costs you five cents versus, and that's assuming you've got it on hand. Um, tons and tons of recipes and all kinds of other information she has on here. Um, as well as dinner, she does giveaways and everything else. Um, but she's got lots of it on her site. And every, every week she posts, I don't know if I can get it on here. There we go, meal planning. <coughs> Excuse me, every week she posts a weekly meal plan that you can print out with a printable grocery list. So you can even go to her thing, she's got a week of $5 dinners. And you can look at the grocery list and make adjustments to it as to what you have on hand. Or you could look at several weeks that she's got and pull them together based on what you've got on hand. If you just don't have that, you don't want to think about that, you don't want to try to put it together, there are lots of resources out there um, to see what she's got, what other people have and what you can do. She's gotten more, the more published she's become, the more um, foo -foo her recipes have become. <laughs> Um, but they're good, and they're still cheap, and they're still easy for the most part. I think mean, they're still pretty easy. Um, but the real basics, I mean, she's still got some real basic stuff. I've got the cookbooks, and they're, they're great. Oops. Be quiet. Do you know that so many of the new recipes have so many ingredients in them? Yes. That's part of the problem, I think. I think um, as all recipes tends to be a lot, allrecipes.com tends to be a lot of recipes that are tried and true. Like, this is something my grandma used to make, or this is something my mom always made. You know, and they're a lot more, you're not gonna get the fancy ingredients that you don't have on hand and that kind of thing. Taste of Home, which is, you know, puts out tons of magazine, or magazines and cookbooks and everything else, but those recipes, same kind of thing. They're pretty simple. They're pretty, like, the ingredients you have, um, that kind of thing. And a lot of these that I'm showing you here are gonna be the same way, just the simple, Basic, and when that's the thing too, I think that we get so used to seeing some of that that when we think about putting stuff together ourselves, we don't think of the simple because we've got all this other stuff flashing in front of us all the time. Yeah. Well, and I, I've mentioned something else, but it's kind of got me thinking. Um, I don't know where the library carries, but I know I've got a kitchen home, I think, that has like 83 vegan recipes. Yes. Or it's all like a man, a can, a plan. Yep. I'm just curious to see how it Yeah, it, it's, it's, no, no, oh, I mean, I, like, oh, okay. It's okay. Nope. Um, the woman who started this blog started it because they were going through a rough patch and she needed to figure out how, what they were going to do and then she was all tickled that she could do, that she like geeked out on like figuring out how much each thing was costing her and she was having a great time so she started a blog. Um, and she got very into, once you kind of get into blogging, you kind of get sucked in. Um, and it's, and it, you, get, you meet the publishers and you meet people like that and you meet other people that are doing stuff and you learn you can do more and so a lot of them started at the student at home and they've created a business out of it, which is what she's done. She's crazy in the past three years, has just put out like three books or something like that. Yes. Yep. So a lot of them are that way. There are places out there that are set up by businesses to look that way. Yes. I have a comment about eating out. So yes. When I eat out, which isn't real often, mm -hmm. I always eat only half of what I get. Absolutely. Absolutely, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. That was one of my favorite tricks in college. Yeah. <laughs> was scramble eggs and put it in with my noodle or my leftover um, Chinese food. That's an excellent idea. And that, even from like a health standpoint, that um, was something that we did, is that when you get there, you ask for a box when you order. Um, you don't just say, I'm, oh yeah, I'm gonna take half of it home. When you order, you say, please bring the box with you when you bring my food, and you take half of it, and you put it in the box, and you set it aside for later. So, yeah. Um, I think I kind of have noticed things in all these suggestions mm -hmm. and recipes. Uh, there aren't really casseroles as far as I understand. Is that because of the preparation uh, it might be some of it. I think I find a lot of casseroles anymore, but I also wonder if there's some backlash because I grew up with a lot of casseroles. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder, and you know, a lot of these women are they're all my age, and maybe they all grew up with casseroles too, and we kind of <laughs> just don't want another casserole. My mom said I would never wear overalls because when I grew up, because she, right, she always tried to put my kids in overalls, and I said I don't, I don't really know why, but I don't. She's like, I know why you don't like overalls. <laughs> and it would kind of might be the same thing, but yeah, it's, you know, that's a lot of people overlook that, and that's where I was talking about like the fillers. Like you can make 
chili mac instead of chili. Put some noodles in it, make a casserole. We make it up that way. Put your stuff together. And so yeah, I think you're right. I don't see a lot of casseroles so much as meals, but cooking has also become, like he said, more of an industry, more of a thing instead of what you do for sustenance. And so I think maybe people are too busy for that. I don't know. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's not quite the thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. Yes. You just made me realize when I go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and they have their grocery store little magazine for the mm -hmm. season and all those recipes with so many ingredients. Yes. I just realized that's what they're trying to have you yeah. buy. Absolutely. <laughs> Like, because it looks great, doesn't it? You see these pictures, and you're like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> see, but, and it's, but it's that kind of thing that I was, you said when I started. There is stuff that when, you, when it occurs to you, you're like, oh, yeah. Like, why didn't I think of that? But sometimes it just takes pointing out or kind of adjusting your way of thinking. And then once you get that, then you start to see some of that other stuff, and you kind of put it all together. I've heard <laughs> that you're supposed to replace them every three to six months. Oh. I have some that I moved with me into my husband's house when I moved in. <laughs> and I was actually just thinking about that the other day. I'm like, I wonder how much different stuff would taste if I had fresher <laughs> spices. Um, but I think, you know, if you're a connoisseur or you're really, in, you're really worried about the flavors meshing and you have a sensitive palate, then you're going to have to replace your spices or you're going to use them up. I always, yeah, I always use, I always use more than I, than the recipe calls for. I just think it doesn't, they, they create some of that stuff for people, so that it appeals to everybody. How many spices you can grow in the freezer itself? Absolutely. Um, you can do it in a window box. You can do it, in, you know, and freeze them up. You can freeze fresh spices in, again, in a, in an ice cube tray. You chop them up or snip them up and put them in with the water so that it freezes in the cube. And you've got it in tables, like take a tablespoon of a fresh, a fresh herb, dump it in an ice cube tray, and then fill the ice cube tray with water. And you frozen, and then you can just throw it straight into your soups or your sauces or whatever. They've got a little bit of extra water in them, but you've, you know, yeah, that can cook into your soup or whatever. One of my friends is one of the overnight stockers at Hy-Vee, and mm -hmm. I'm sure he hands out. Why do I have to learn from one kind of food rather than getting fed? <laughs> so you see everything in between. Said, yeah, they absolutely. Yep. Yep. That's exactly right. There's there is a method, like a, a researched method to laying everything out. Are you on a time order? Yeah, we're just. Oh, I didn't see the ten. I'm sorry. We're just about out of time, so um, don't forget to leave your email address yes. for Jen, so she can send us all kinds of great things. And no, um, I'll send you one email. I won't. I won't bomb you. <laughs> but I'll send you one email with a link to all kinds of great things. Yeah. And, um,